He played in the NFL for 11 years, six consecutive Pro Bowls, a friend of the show, a free agent defensive tackle, Gerald McCoy for the first time ever joining us. Fam, joining us in the, the studio. Hey, listen, y'all tried to stay away from me, but no, we didn't. there's no way I could stay away with family. You can pull that right up. With family. So hey, you, are, you are a free agent. You are, uh, you are listening to offers. I am. Uh-huh. I am. I'm just rehabbing and staying in shape and waiting to get a call. That's it. You know, it, it, this, years and years ago, Sean McVay of the Rams said, no more starters in the preseason. Mm-hmm. We're not, this is ridiculous. Right. And the NFL coaches, oh, they can't do that. Then they right. went 8-0 to start the season. Yeah. Everybody was like, they'll be rusty. And I, I look at these OTAs now, and I say to myself, well, God, if veterans don't need to play right before the season, do they really need to practice and so I'm not as tough on guys, even quarterbacks, who miss OTAs. Right. How, how do you, as a veteran, how do you look at it? Nah, I just feel like uh, as a professional, they pay you to be a professional. You're not a kid anymore. In college, you need every rep you can get. And I think it's really just based off who you are. Like me, I love practicing because I need it. I'm a player who has to get his timing down. I have to, uh, you know, feel the hits, take on the double teams, work on whatever move I'm working on because of my film study. Whoever I'm going against that week, I need to work on it that week in practice. I'm just that guy. Some people are not. I've seen people like Michael Bennett. He's one of my closest friends yeah. in the world, and he didn't need to practice. And He can go dominate <laughs> like what y'all seen on Sundays. He didn't need to practice. He was more concerned about making sure his body felt great. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, it just – it's – Per person to me, but as a as a person on the team, if a person's not there, as long as you show up on Sunday, I'm not the guy who can give you a hard time. I'm just not. Yeah, players don't resent it if you deliver. If as you're productive, as long as you show up on Sunday when it counts. Um, you know, it, it, it's so. I said one of the things you don't need to put every meal you eat on social media, and right. you don't need to give every comment. There are a lot of things I think that don't need to be public. Right, and I and I I haven't quite figured out. I'm letting it bake in my head before I thrust it out there. Mm-hmm. So when Aaron Rodgers talked retirement, I'm like, no, d- I, won't, I won't put that out there. Well, Devontae Adams says over the weekend, yeah, that's why I left. <sighs> He's like, <laughs> I, I, they offered me more money, but I don't want to get stuck. Mm-hmm. And I thought, Aaron, you probably should keep that retirement thing. Right. Like, and I, that's why I, some, I think when Brady was going to leave New England, Gerald, he didn't tell anybody because he knew it would be the question Absolutely. for 20 weeks. Yeah. And so sometimes, I don't know, I look at Aaron and I think, Aaron, you're smarter than that. Keep that to yourself. Yeah. I, I mean, he's my favorite player. So I kind of have to, I get biased at times, but in reality, if I'm his receiver, I feel the same way. You, like, you can't keep doing that. Like I'm, I'm about to be locked in here for the next five years and I want a quarterback that I can trust. Of course. I mean, we seen the backup play. It wasn't pretty. So <laughs> I don't think he's really confident on being there five more years yeah. with love. But if you're here, okay, I'll stay. But I need some security. Yes, I want the money as well, but I want the security because I play a dependent position. That's so right. if you're in and out, in and out, I can't I don't trust it. So I I understand and I respect it. So San Francisco is an interesting situation. Um, we think Trey Lance is good. We've mm-hmm. seen him twice play, and it was his accuracy is not great. It's kind of aesthetically, it's not a beautiful. He's not a beautiful thrower. He's not right. Mahomes or a Justin Herbert. It's not right. pretty. And and I just saw a story this morning where Kyle Shanahan has given the team, "We're done with mandatories. Go home." I saw everything I wanted. Trey Lance is like, "I want to keep working on stuff." So, Joy and I are like, there's way too many people saying, talking about Trey Lance. Like, if he was good. When Mahomes, we hadn't seen him yet. Mm -hmm. The only thing anybody ever said is, wait until you see this guy. Right. With Trey Lance, it's he's going to be fine. I think it's good. He's working very hard. As a player, how long would you have to watch a quarterback in camp to know we got problems or we're going to be fine. How many practices? How many? What do you need to see? If we don't see vast improvement from the first week of pads and teams don't really practice against each other, 
at all camp anymore. They go against somebody. If we don't see vast improvement from the beginning of camp to the end of camp, you go into game one like, I don't know. So you say the light goes on for the great quarterbacks fast. Yeah, you can see it. There's something that flashes. You're like, okay, it's in there. I just, it has to be more consistent. But if you see like, this is like who he is, this is happening, and you go into a practice like, because in, in training camp you compete. If you go into a training camp as a defense, like, oh, yeah, I know we got this. That's not good. You should go into a training camp, worry about the heat, and worry about – and then when you know, man, I got to – we got to deal with him in this offense, and I got to – you shouldn't go into a practice like, you know what, let's work on us because we need to go against somebody else because I don't – I don't know. That's – you You know. The guys in the locker room, they know. They know who's on their team. Yeah, you can't lie to the players. You can't. You can't. Um, I don't know if you'd have a strong opinion on this, but, um, well, you're an Oklahoma guy. So I've been critical of Baker, not right. necessarily always his play, right. but I've said, I like my presidents to be presidential. I like my quarterbacks to be quarterback heel. Mm-hmm. You're the one that Wednesday addresses the media. Um, you're kind of the coach on the field. And I always said, Baker it becomes his own worst enemy. All the off field stuff, calling out the medical staff, calling out Duke Johnson. It's mm-hmm. like, dude, just go play. You got a nice arm. You can play. Now there's a report that the Panthers may bring him in. How surprised were you considering his talent? And I do think he throws a really good ball. There was literally no market for him. What does that say for Baker? I don't know if it says says a lot about his character or who he is as a quarterback more than why would we pay him all this money and y'all going to have to do something with him at some point anyway. You know, and and I, I've, I've been saying this. My son, we've been having this conversation. I feel like – Teams know the Browns are going to have to do something. They went and got Deshaun Watson. So they have to do something with Baker. So why would we jump out the window and pay him all this money when we don't have to? At some point, he's either going to get released or something's going to happen. So there's no rush to go and throw out all this money. And I believe Baker can be good for somebody's team. But for other teams looking at the Brown situation, I think they're looking like there's no rush. We can wait because they have to make the decision. We have enough here right now that we'll be okay until something happens. But he's is there's no need to hurry up and go get Baker. Yeah. You know, you were at a college football power, and then you went to the Bucks where they had some good teams. You always had mm-hmm. talent there. Right. And we this is interesting because um in college football now, we have the transfer portal and the NIL. I'm a fan of free both. Free agency. Yeah, I'm, I'm a fan of both. I think It's free agency. Basically. They're, yes. They're pro athletes. Yes. So let me ask you this. Um, I always felt like star players. Maybe I'm wrong. I always felt like star college players. I don't know if it was a hundy. I don't know if it was uh, free stakes. I always felt like, especially college basketball, if you're the mm-hmm. big man on campus, you, you're getting a free smoothie here and there. It's not like you're... you're and then you talk to a lot of guys, and they're like, no, dude, I starved for four years. Right. Like, at a college football power, were you ever hungry? Did you ever feel used, exploited? How did you feel? No, I never felt exploited. Um, I know most of us, I have a group chat with a lot of my friends, and a lot of us see, like, we go back and see, like, how they treat these kids now. We're like, man, y'all getting all this because of the work we put in. <laughs> you know, that's how we felt. We never felt exploited. But I tell you this, yes, I was hungry. <laughs> Anybody telling you that a college student is not hungry at times and looking for how he's going to eat and all, that's – we were. I don't know how these kids are now, but I know we were. They could, I dropped my son off at OU, and we went to Target. And we came back, and he had meals waiting on him at his door, in his dorm. But we got dropped off, and we was all looking around like, where are we going now? What do we do now? It was food everywhere. We went back for the spring game, and they had a sign up. This food is for active players only. It's like all these alumni come back and we can't get something to eat. That's how they treat these kids now. So I know us. I never felt exploited, but I know we didn't get treated like these kids get treated now. Right. The um, we we You look at the world, uh, the empowered athlete, and it, it's funny because we've talked about this in the NBA. Even when I was like in the 70s, the NBA has always been known as a player's league. You fire the coach. No, it's not the players. The NFL's different. NFL's been about the GM, the shield, right. the league. You can be cut. You can cut Brady tomorrow. Yes. So the NBA is not. But it is funny, Steve Kerr, hard coaches. Mm-hmm. Ime Adoku, hard coaches. 
uh, you know, Phil Jackson, hard coaches. Yeah. And my takeaway is I think empowering the players is great. But the reality is the best teams in sports, the players have limitations on they're not making personnel. I mean, Aaron Rodgers is like, I want, to, I want Randall Cobb. Right. Dude, he's a number four. Can't yeah. pay him like a two or a three. Right. Your takeaway on professional athletes, more power, more money, more leverage. Do you see issues with it or are you all in on it? I, I personally feel you should just consult with them. And don't make a decision without going to your guys. Because when you bring these guys in, you still are going to depend on me. If I'm your guy or one of your guys, you expect me to be me when I play. Well, I feel like you should consult with me about who I'm playing with. And if you're not doing that, I see a problem with that. But I don't I think it's I think it's funny if anybody thinks that a person is brought in and they don't go to their top guys and ask, hey, what do you feel about this person? You think it's cool if we bring this person in, this, this, and this? You know, uh, was it Jerry Krauss was Bulls? Yeah, GM. GM. I think you got to go way back then to where he said, I don't care how y'all feel. This is what I'm doing. You know, now when after LeBron did what he did with Miami, the player empowerment, it skyrocketed. Right. And a lot of people do a, diff- a lot of different things for the game. He did that for the game. And um, guys are just saying, hey, listen, if you want to bring these guys in, you should consult with me. When I was with the Bucks, when we would bring people in, GM would call me, hey, we think about getting this guy, think about getting this guy, think about drafting this guy. Yeah, I like him. Eh, I don't know. I like him. Yeah, I think you should just do that with your guys. I think it's they've earned their right. Well, you and I have worked in the media long enough. Uh, I've done this before where I've gone to media people and said, well, what do you make of this person? Trustable, coachable, like him? I mean, you know, you're in the business long yeah. enough. You just kind of know. So you were with the Raiders last year. I was. And it's it's really a remarkable story. So I've been a defender of Derek Carr forever. Mm-hmm. And I say, what, what, what I think Derek Carr illustrated last year that people doubted is even with chaos, a defense that was inconsistent. Darren Waller was out. Uh, the Henry Rugg situation. I'm like, he got him into the playoffs. Mm-hmm. Like, that's a star to me. Were you surprised? Was Derek better than you thought from the outside until you joined? No, I've always been a Derek Carr fan, and he'll tell you that. I told him that from afar. When I got there, I told him that. I've always thought he was underrated. I've always said, anybody who knows me knows, I've always said Derek Carr is underrated. Ask my son, my friends, anybody knows, I've always said he's underrated. I mean, you don't have that many fourth quarter comebacks or game winning drives and not be special. And I just think he got a bad rap. I think he had a lot of bad situations around him, but right. he showed his resilience last year. And I'm excited to see what he can do this year with that type of team around him, with McDaniels, you know, giving him a system that fits him. I'm excited to see what he can do. What, what, what was it like to be a Raider last year with all the noise? I think what that team did was remarkable. I think it's a testament of the character of the guys in the locker room. Those guys band together from – the what was what was coming out of the locker room, the message in the locker room, hey, we have to do this. And I just want to give a shout out to Rich Basaccia, what he was able to do. He's one of the greatest coaches I've ever been around in the history of the NFL. And he's been kind of funneled to a special teams coach, but he's one of the best coaches I've ever seen that can get men to band together for one cause. That Indianapolis win on the road. I'm telling you. That was the biggest Raider win in a decade. I'm telling you, man, what he was able to do with all those guys in that locker room and just the men in the locker room, that's why I'm I'm always going to root for the Raiders because one of what Rich did and what those guys in that locker room represented and how they band together. No, they didn't win in the playoffs, but they got there. And – if you look in the history of NFL, if something like that happens to most teams, they fold oh, and they totally, break down. Totally but those fold. guys, how they would play, and, and it's not like they were a group of vets. Those guys, like Max Crosby going to year four. You Hunter know what I'm Renfro's saying? Like, a kid. Jacobs. Everybody's young. But also, when people question Derek Carr, go back and look at what he was able to do last year as a leader. What your, if your quarterback is in place and he's rocking, your team can go. And they did. 
Yeah, the um, you know it, it's uh, we were saying this earlier that Andrew Wiggins was with the T Wolves and everybody said he's a bum and then he put him in a good culture mm-hmm. and an actor needs a script doesn't matter how good the actor is right. he can't overcome a bad boss or a bad director and it, like Matt Stafford last year I found myself rooting for Matt Stafford not because he played for the Rams but because that poor guy had to deal with nonsense in Detroit for years yeah. and were you surprised how great he ended up being in the playoffs? Um, I wouldn't say I was surprised. You played against him a few yeah, times. Yeah, I wouldn't say I was surprised. I mean, he just got put in a great system and a great something that fit him. And did you know I he tell was you that what, good? I always felt like he was really good. I tell you, I tell you what I was surprised about is the instant uh, connection between him and Cooper Cup. How they? I mean, that's a historic connection, and they just met. <laughs> you know, I don't care what nobody say. Having coffee every morning don't do that. <laughs> That's just I don't, they can say whatever they want. Oh, we we talked and we had breakfast together and all. Man, listen, nobody would have expected that. Maybe yes, we were a quarterback away. We went to the Super Bowl. We were a quarterback away, but that what they gave you now that surprised me. I think that surprised everybody. Now I, I got to ask you this, and I think I asked you before um, when Lincoln Riley left your alma mater, as people got really worked up. And my takeaway yeah. is. Talented people leave all the time. Talented right. players leave Oklahoma. Absolutely, That's life. But when you're in a smaller town and right. the university is the center of it, loyalty is a big deal in Oklahoma, mm-hmm. in Auburn, Alabama. And we should not mock that. That is the reality of smaller town America. Your economy can be very dependent on the team. Right. People, a lot of the employee, employees work at Oklahoma. And it's also the center of your fun. I mean, if the falls in Oklahoma are unbelievable. Yes. Um, Do you think people will ever get over that? I think they already have. You know, I think it it bothered them at first, but hiring Brent Venables is like Lincoln Riley's afterthought because a lot of people felt like what Brent Venables was able to do at Oklahoma, he deserved this opportunity because he showed that it wasn't just in Oklahoma he can do it. He went to Clemson and did it. And – Being at the spring game and just hearing the rumblings and all the talk, Lincoln Riley, God bless you, but this is the Brent Venables era, and I think people have already moved on. Are you going to help the university? Am I going to help Well, you could help them. Uh, You know, you're a business guy out there. Yeah, Yeah, I mean, I I tweet a lot about my school. (laughs) (laughs) Nothing wrong with tweeting. Hey, listen, I'm the hugest advocate for my school, man. I love my school to death and anything I'm a part of. I'm just going to rep. You know, anybody at the gym I go to at Exos, they'll tell you, if if we have new interns in, one of the first questions I ask, your name and what school you went to. And if you didn't go to a school that's at the level of Oklahoma, I'm going to give you a hard time because I love my school and I rep my school to the fullest. The um, Gerald McCoy joining us, if you're listening on radio. Uh, one final question. If, uh, let's say you play, let's say you don't. What will you do? You seem active. You seem mm-hmm. curious. You're not going to just sit in home oh, no, and I golf. <laughs> no, I can't sit at home. Uh, right now, I'm just – Coach? I am I I can't coach. Like, coaching takes up more time than playing. I know. And if I coach, I'm going to coach my kids. That's it. I'm just being honest. Like, I help my kids' teams right now, my, my son's Little League team. I help coach them. But I can deal with that. But coaching, coaching, like – College or the, it just takes away too much time. But for some reason, these lights look good on me right now. They so do. I, maybe I might do something in front of the camera. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. If you when you look back at your career, six straight Pro Bowls, would you give a bunch up for a Super Bowl, or are you really satisfied with your career and understand that Super Bowls is a lot of luck and timing, and you can't control it? Would I give up my Pro Bowls? Would, for would Super you Bowl? Would you give up four of your six Pro Bowls for yes. a ring? Would yes. you give up? Uh, Three, two, yeah. yes. Okay, so you're about would. winning. You're about winning. I want to win. I want to win. My little league team won a national championship. I got to middle school. We won the city championship. We got to high school, and we got to OU. I won three Big Twelve championships and went to a national championship. I got to the league last year. Technically, I made the playoffs for the first time, but I wasn't playing. So I'm all about winning. I want to experience winning. Winning feels great. It feels good. And what comes along with winning, everything else that came with what came with my career. A lot of people make the Pro Bowl or be all pro or get the money because they win. How many people you seen get paid because their team won the Super Bowl? And everybody's looking like, how he get paid? Because he's on a Super Bowl team. Right. 
And then Super Bowl brings everything outside of that. You can never take that from somebody, yeah. ever. A Super now, Bowl now champion. You, you'd give up the Pro Bowls. Would you give up some money? I don't know about that. Okay. <laughs> I got five kids. No, I'm not giving up the money. Yeah. Hey, you, I totally get that. Right. Totally get that. Absolutely. It's great having you in the studio. You're always welcome. You know, during the season, if yeah. you ever made your way out. Now, why are you out here now? I'm over at NFL Network working. Oh, good. Doing some analyst oh, stuff. Oh, great. I, the camera is calling. I don't know why the camera keeps calling me. Well, I don't know. Yeah. But I had to come visit my family. I wasn't going. You thought I was coming to L.A. and not see my family? Well, and also, you're comfortable in front of the camera. Uh, Which guess, took yeah. me a long time to get right. there. And you yeah. look at you still could play in the NFL. Yeah. Great seeing you. Do you have a Twitter account or anything anybody wants to go yes, to? Yes, Geraldini93. I'm trying to get my TikTok going. I don't even know my TikTok name, but it's tagged to my Twitter and my Instagram is Geraldini93. I'm trying to get more active with sure. it. Sure. But I have a lot of children. I do a lot of work now. I do a lot of moving around. But yeah. I'm working on my TikTok. Working go. on getting my TikTok going. Great seeing you. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.